Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be answering a question somebody recently had on a live stream and that was asking about propellers. They're asking things like, you know, do we have constant speed, do we have fixed, do we have a variable angle, uh, what RPM settings should we be using, you know, kind of how they work, and we're going to take a look at all of that today. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we're going to be using two flight simulators today, only on account of the fact that over here in X-Plane it's a lot easier to show certain things. So we're going to show off some of those and also got some little images to kind of go with it. So first of all, let's take a look at a propeller. Uh, for those of you who uh, take a look at this shape right away, you'll probably notice the fact that our propeller is no more than an airfoil. As a matter of fact, looking at this nice little cross section here on the side, you can see that it looks very, very, very similar to that of a wing. So when we actually take this airfoil, you'll also notice that it's got a distinct twist to it. So what have you done? You've basically taken the same concept that gives you lift and you've applied it for the purposes of trying to give you thrust. So whereas the wind comes to the wing, in this particular application, we bring the wind to it in order to produce it. I know that's a gross oversimplification, but it actually works fairly well for us. So why has the propeller got that twist in it? Well, let's go take a look at a curve, a little diagram of a propeller here. So we have a propeller and we have a propeller where it's spinning, which means the farther away from the center of the thing that's spinning, the greater the physical speed that you're going to be traveling, linear speed in this case. So for example, if our inside bit of the propeller here is turning, let's say, uh, well, they're all going to be 100 RPM. Let's say it's moving at uh, 50 meters a second. This guy out here on the tip could be moving 500 meters a second, meaning if we want to get the same amount of usable thrust, we're going to have to increase the angle of attack. Now, propeller designers realized this right away and noticed that our little tips where most of the work's done, where the propeller's physically traveling the fastest through the air, doesn't need a lot of twist. Whereas towards the middle of the propeller, it actually twists this too to help with engine cooling a little bit. You can see it as a significantly greater angle of attack. Now, there's something worth noting here, and I'll go grab this one quickly. As the RPM of an engine increases and the propeller speed increases as well, these tips can run the risk of bumping into the speed of sound. Now, if you want to read something really, really, really fun, look up Thunder Screech Airplane and you can see exactly what happens. But basically, because of aerodynamics, we can't let this a tip get up to those speeds. So one of the problems that propeller designers are always going to be dealing with is, what is my maximum speed I can safely rotate this thing and still produce usable thrust without being like, you know, 19 feet, you know, I'm looking at you, B36, kind of a thing like that. Obviously, you can increase the number of blades that you have on your propeller, or what you could possibly do as well, is you could try increasing its speed, but that gets a little messy, and there's ducted fans, and there's a lot of different solutions to kind of fix this problem. They have dual propeller propellers, if you want to look at a tuple of 95, for example. So with that kind of out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the pitch of a propeller. I'm going to grab another image here. So propellers have a distinct pitch. So what a pitch is, is how twisted this blade is. I actually float up to the tippy top of it. You can see right now that this is a very, very, very fine pitch blade. You know, you're looking at it and it's basically almost horizontal or perpendicular to the incoming airflow. As this propeller blade twists, it takes a bigger bite out of the air. Obviously, if you're going to take a bigger bite out of the air, that's going to reduce the total volume. It's going to increase the amount of work the propeller is going to have to complete, which in turn usually slows the engine down, which is going to be something really important later on. So when you're at a very, very fine pitch like we are right now for takeoff, you let the propeller go really, really, really fast. It takes a smaller bite of the air, but because it's traveling so fast, you produce a greater amount of thrust. Now, as uh, you want to go ahead and increase the bite of the air you take, you're going to increase the load in the motor, which is naturally going to try to slow things down. But since you're taking a big bite, you're basically getting a more efficient bite at the cost of reduced RPM. This would be what they call course or cruise pitch. Now, if you want a really dramatic way to look at that, you can actually see here that that during a takeoff here, the blades on this ATR here are basically horizontal, but once they get going, they take a bigger bite of the air, which helps slow the thing down, make a little less noise. That's going to be our constant speed. Now we'll deal with that in just a minute, kind of a thing like that. Now it's also worth noting that there are two basic types of propellers that you're going to find in an airplane. The first one's going to be what they call fixed pitch, where this little angle that we have here is set by the manufacturer and cannot be changed in flight. That simply means when I push the throttle forward, the RPM is going to increase, but it's only going to increase based on the airflow through this propeller and of course, you know, other ambient conditions. You also have what they call constant speed propellers, which is what this is. What this can do is actually adjust its angle in flight in order to optimize the amount of uh, RPM the engine is basically developing at that particular time. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, experiment with this one first. So there's a lot of different types of engines here. And for this particular example, we're gonna concentrate on using the basic one. Ooh, there it goes, nice, which is going to be our constant speed. We'll take a look at a fixed pitch prop over in Microsoft flight simulator in order to kind of take a look at what that is. 
So before we take a look at kind of the impacts of this, let me actually open up the screen. This one's going to be a lot more valuable. I also have a bunch of numbers at the top of the screen. It's worth mentioning a couple of things about a torque curve. Now, your engine inside the aircraft is optimized for a specific RPM at a specific point. So if I were to take a torque curve, torque is simply a twisting force. So this little blue line here is actually going to be total. This is going to be power. We're looking for a situation where at the maximum rated RPM of the aircraft, we produce our maximum amount of power. Uh, the reason we want it that way is because when we need to take off power, as we probably heard before, we want that to be where our maximum RPM is. If for some reason our maximum power was less than that at our maximum RPM, there'd be no reason to ever go there because we wouldn't produce anything useful out of the engine. So one of the things you're going to see is we need to try to keep this at the setting that we need for a given flight characteristic. At takeoff, obviously, we want to be at maximum power. And during cruise, we don't need maximum power. So we have a bunch of different options kind of in between. Now, when you're using a constant speed propeller, you're going to basically be adjusting things so that you can get a certain power by a combination of manifold pressure, which is going to basically be how much power you're producing, versus your actual RPM, which is going to act as a limiter. So for example, my little torque curve right here, if I were to limit, uh, pull my throttle back so I can only move uh, right up here at 15, 16, 1700 RPM, no matter what I set my throttle to for manifold pressure, I will never be able to produce my peak power because it doesn't uh, produce enough RPM to actually achieve it. So I know that sounds like a lot, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and uh, set parking brake to maximum here and I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the throttle all the way forward. The whole plane is going to crouch down here. I'm going to reduce my volume on my end. You can see we're producing our maximum 35 inches of mercury here. We're producing about 2,490 RPM. If you look up at the top of the screen now, you'll see that I'm producing 289 horsepower, 1,200 thrust, 600 torque, and I'm about 2,500 RPM. And my propeller pitch right now is 9, which is very fine. So now if I just take my throttle and pull my throttle back, let's pull it back just a little bit here. We'll come down to, let's say, about 30 inches. You'll see my aircraft is now producing 220 horsepower. So 220 divided by 290 means I'm now producing 75% of my maximum power. The other thing you probably notice is my RPM dropped because the aircraft no longer has enough power to actually keep it moving at that same speed. It's an interesting thing because I never touched the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the propeller pitch control and I'm going to start slowly pulling it back here. Now watch what happens. Notice my power here does not change at all. But you know it does change? The RPM of the engine. And if you look up top, you can see that I'm now producing 220 horsepower again because I'm now significantly under my maximum speed where I produce that normal maximum power. Another interesting thing you'll notice is my torque is exactly the same. I'm still producing 600 torque. And you'll also probably notice that my thrust has come down substantially because I'm not moving that propeller as fast. The other thing you'll probably notice is my pitch, which is the pitch of the rotation of the propeller, is significantly twisted right now. I'm basically uh, clumping down on that area that's coming in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and push that back up a little bit. And we're going to come up to back, let's call it about 2300 RPM here. Uh, just to make this demonstration a little bit easier there. It's about 2300 right there. And now you'll notice I'm producing about 265 horsepower and about 1100 thrust. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the throttle back. And now notice my RPM is staying about the same. Uh, the reason my RPM is staying about the same is because the aircraft engine is still powerful enough to twist that propeller at that setting to go 2300 RPM. So if I were now I'm doing 220 horsepower again, by the way, I keep pulling the sucker back, keep pulling it back. Yeah, see how it's no longer able to produce enough to actually keep it that RPM. So in essence, we've created ourselves a secondary limiter for this one. Now here's where things get really, really interesting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give myself full power, and I'm also going to give myself full pitch here. And I'm going to reduce it to, let's call it a uh, 31 inches. We are perfect eh, about 31.1 i'm not going to get exact here so i'm producing 234 horsepower and i'm also generating 1074 thrust right now that's a pounds of thrust yes i know it's not a convenient unit but oh well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and push the throttle forward and i'm going to go ahead and pull this back now watch how far back i have to pull the rpm to not produce that same amount of thrust at about 1,074, that's 1,100 thrust, and it's about right there. Notice how much of a 
bite the propeller is now taking in order to produce that same amount of thrust. Now, obviously, if I would not want to run my engine like this because I don't have a fuel pressure gauge on here that I can see right away, but it's there. Don't worry. I just, I'm being blind. Uh, yeah, there is oil pressure. This should be slowly hiking upwards because basically what you're doing is you're trying to step on the gas pedal in fifth gear from a stop. It'd be a very, very bad combination. So you can see you actually have an infinite number of variations of power as well as RPM to achieve a set given flight characteristic. And you probably saw by the fuel flows as well how those adjust. Now you're probably sitting there going, okay, I kind of get what you mean now. So basically you just make the combination in order to get it to what you want it to be. Why would you do X, Y, and Z? Well, we'll take a look at that in um, a flight sim. But here's what we want to take a look at next. And that is when we head over to a turboprop. Now a turboprop almost always has a constant speed propeller. I could not imagine a turboprop would not have a constant speed propeller on it. Now here's where things get interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my throttle. I'm gonna slowly push it forward. That was not slowly. And I'm gonna go all the way up to peak torque, which is gonna be right in here. There we go, that's about right. So I'm gonna go make sure my RPM is set correctly as well. I don't think I did that yet. There we go, and that looks pretty good. So what do we see here? And now why is this something that's gonna be a little interesting for us? Well, notice here that I'm producing about 1357 torque. Eh, that's a little high, but that's okay. And 2200 RPM. If you look up here, you can see I'm producing 570 horsepower and about 2100 thrust. Now watch what happens when I pull the uh, propeller handle back. I'm gonna keep going. Notice my torque is increasing, but I'm not touching my power control. So I'm down to 2000 and now I'm showing 1400 torque. Now, if you come up here into power, you'll notice I'm producing about 550 power. So even though I've knocked off 200 RPM, I've only reduced my actual available power by a teeny tiny bit. Another thing you probably observed is that our RPM came up on the turbine. And the other thing you observe is the torque went up. Why did the torque go up? Well, remember, this is a measure of reactive torque. So in essence, what we're feeling here is as we're trying to put more load on the engine, the engine is working a little bit harder in order to make sure that it's able to produce that particular RPM, which in turn increases the amount of torque. But the interesting thing here is you'll notice we've barely taken anything off the top of our power. Now, if I push the controller all the way back forward, you notice the propeller RPM comes up, the power comes up a little tiny bit, and my torque returns back to normal because we're producing more power than anything. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Right now, I'm producing 2,170 pounds of thrust. So let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit again. Sorry, 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 sorry. Deal, deal, deal. That's about 2,000. Notice I'm producing 2,165 pounds of thrust. Now, what makes a turboprop so unique? is the fact that because of the way systems are built, we have the ability to operate at different RPM settings that are going to basically give us the exact amount of thrust, which makes it so different. But one of the things we have to watch out for in a turboprop is that we make sure our torque is within limits when we start finagling this. Honestly, with a prop control on a, a turboprop, you're only really gonna be setting that during cruise in order to reduce noise. And at that point, you're probably not gonna be at 1400 torque. You're gonna be coming down here like 1170 or something like that to make it a little bit easier on the aircraft itself. So we've seen an awful lot about the constant speed propellers. We've seen an awful lot about, you know, kind of the way that we're basically limiting the engine's maximum power. Now let's take a look at what it's going to look like if you have a fixed pitch situation. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at fixed pitch propellers. Now that constant speed, that was pretty complicated. You know, that engine is constantly adjusting the position of that propeller blade in order to achieve those combinations. Now, when you're dealing with something that is a fixed pitch propeller, it's a little bit different because we don't have that system. Instead, we have a system whereby the entire system is just going to rotate based on the available engine power at that time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set my parking brake. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slam on the throttle here on this little Cessna 152. And we can see that the RPM is uh, come shot up to about 2,400 RPM. So you can see that, let's say this aircraft is uh, rated at 120 horsepower. We're not even making 120 horsepower because we never actually get that far up our curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the brake here. You know, get us uh, rolling down the runway rolling down the runway or something equivalent to that. And you're probably noticing that the RPM is slowly starting to creep up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing going pretty quick here and pause. So what you probably notice now is the RPM is coming up on its own. You're like, but wait, there's not a constant speed. Well, you gotta remember now, the aircraft is now having wind travel through the propeller blade, and it's actually helping accelerate the process, which is increasing our RPM, which conveniently is also providing us with the ability to go ahead and now have more thrust. So, 
we can do a nice power takeoff like that because I was in freeze. So you'll notice now, I'm gonna go ahead and hold the aircraft's nose up a little bit here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold it. And what I want you to observe is watch the RPM slowly start to drop. You can see I'm doing about 2,500 RPM here. I'm just gonna hold this nose up. And we're gonna come push it down just a little bit. Now I'm getting about 2,450 RPM here on account of the fact that I'm at full throttle right now. I've got that you know little butterfly valve open as wide as it can get. And I've got a significant amount of air moving through the propeller. So let's go ahead and uh, summon a little bit of uh, altitude here. I'm using a little bit of ground handling. Yes, I know I'm in the air, but you can ground handle in the air. Why not? So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to create a problem. Let's go ahead and push this nose downwards. Unload us real gently. you got to love Cessna 152s. And I'm just going to hold the nose. This looks pretty dangerous. There it is. 2,000 feet per minute. Let's do it. 200 knots, and it looks pretty good. You probably observe now, I'm now producing more RPM than I'm supposed to be allowed to in this aircraft. That is because, I'm actually in slow motion right now to make it a little easier for you. That is because there's so much air moving through that propeller blade right now, this actually pushed it to the point where I'm exceeding my maximum capability. And you can see I'm exceeding it by a margin. I could actually have basically was driving the engine through the propeller right now, which is a, one of the challenges of operating fixed pitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that throttle back here. And here we go. All things are all set and all is well in the world once again. So the advantage to a fixed pitch propeller is it's going to be simple. The disadvantage to a fixed pitch propeller is it's going to be very, very difficult to get it to go to a specific engine power depending on situations because you don't have that added aspect that's basically going to be running around. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and uh, set some uh, cruise power here. I'll go to, uh, let's call it about 2,400 RPM. That's looking pretty good right there. And I'm just going to kind of sit here on my little cruise. I'm getting a nice turbulence right in there. I guess I shouldn't be flying over the sub base. It's discouraging me. <laughs> Forget just how bumpy a Cessna 152 is. So now I'm kind of cruising along, cruising along. I'm at my about 2,400 RPM. You know, I've sit there, I've fixed with the propeller quite a bit to try to get it to work. And as I'm cruising along, um, I suddenly run into a situation where, uh, let's see here, uh, maybe it's a little bit colder here than it was, and it shouldn't be that much of a drop. And what'll happen, of course, is I'll get a little lift. I'll push the nose down a little bit, and usually you just run into a uh, different winds and I'm noticing that my RPM is changing because my engine is now producing a different amount of power and because of the changes in air density it's not going to perform the same way. So in essence after I have set my cruise power here I'm going to be running around chasing it trying desperately in order to actually go ahead and set it up in such a way that I can keep it where I want it to be keeping so it's nice and predictable. Again fixed pitch is simple but it also has that aspect of lack of control on it. So hopefully at this point you have a pretty good understanding of the difference between it, you know, why the propeller is the way. Here comes the question about questions, and that's going to be, uh, what are we going to do? What should we set our, our propellers to? But that will be the subject of the next video. Enjoy.